Video number 193, evaluating functions using function notation. Here we go, we got f of x equals 24 over x plus 8, and g of x equals 20 plus 8x minus x squared. This is actually going to be kind of interesting the way this unfolds. We're going to take a look at these four function values. Now actually, before we do these four that I have typed up, let's just do one that's real simple. Let's do, let's do g of 1, okay? g of 1 is how this is pronounced, g of 1. One, okay. Uh, what we're gonna do is we're gonna plug a one in for x. So you're gonna have twenty plus eight times one minus one squared. Okay. Therefore, twenty-eight minus one, which is definitely twenty-seven. So we could say that g of one equals twenty-seven. Or in other words, the g function at one is twenty-seven. In other words. Therefore, 1, 27 is a point that is on g of x. Okay, if you were to graph g of x. Now, we also think of g of x as being a y value. So I just want to point out one of the really awesome benefits to using this function notation is that, look at this, 1, 27 is a solution to that equation. It's really neat. So the 1 is the x, the 27 is the y. It's pretty cool. Okay. So what we could pretty much say is that x comma g of x would be the x comma y. But nonetheless, let's go ahead and continue here with the video with these four uh, function values. So we're going to calculate g of negative 3. Many students mess up on this one right on the first step. I think everybody is, can safely agree that we are definitely looking at this. G of negative 3 equals 20 plus 8 times negative 3 minus whatever negative 3 squared turns out to be. Now right here, some of you guys are saying, well, wait a minute, how come that's not plus 9? Come on, man, I just found a mistake. I'm going to email this guy. This is not a mistake. This is definitely not a negative times a negative. Remember the order of operations, right? You're definitely going to have to do the exponent first. So you're going to square the negative 3 first. That gives you a positive 9. That negative was used when it got squared, and then this minus sign comes right down, so it ends up being minus 9. Therefore, whoop, pew, negative 13. So then what can we say? That negative 3 comma negative 13 is a solution to g of x. Pretty cool. Next one. Oh, here we go. We've got the yellow paper now. All right, so then the next one, we got f of 0 plus g of 10. All right, so f of 0 would end up being 24 over 8, because if you plug a 0 in here, there you go, plus the 20. And how do we get 20? Let's see here. Uh, G of 10. Oh, G of 10. That's actually wrong. I think I meant to put G of 0. I, I think I did it G of 0. Let's just do this right here. There you go. It's not 23. So we got F of 0 plus G of 10. F of 0 is definitely uh, 3. G of 10 is what? It's going to be what? 20 plus 80 minus 100. Do you see why? Right? Because you plug a 10 in. So 20 plus 80 minus 100. That would end up being 0. So you'd end up with uh, 3. So we could say that f of 0 plus g of 10 equals 3. All right, next one. G of negative 8. All right, so we're going to plug a negative 8 in here. And the same kind of thing is going to happen. All right, so we're just kind of double checking here, making sure we got this. This ends up being negative 128 plus the 20, negative 108. Here's the last one. This is the one that's probably the coolest one on this page here. Make sure uh, if you plug in negative 8 in for x for the f function, the f equation, the f function. Plug in negative 8, you're going to have 24 divided by 0, which is an undefined amount. Therefore, f of negative 8 does not exist. So you can get used to using that. All right, so any of my YouTubers, guys, this is the site here. Please come to the site, share this. Uh, any questions or concerns, you can send me an email, and uh, we'll talk to you later. Good times.